Well, good evening everybody. This is Jay Kladek. Thought it was time to provide you with an update on where I'm at with my 1 350th Classic Enterprise from Polar Lights. Well, if you look in front of you, you'll notice that saucer-wise I haven't gotten too very much work done since the last time. But there has been some progress made. I mean, if you look close, you'll notice that I've got some impulse deck uh, engine lights on. I've also got uh, the wiring harness for the three lights that go inside the bridge dome hooked up uh, for testing purposes. And everything else seems to be going rather well. Uh, I've run into a couple of very minor snags and I also wanted to take this time to showcase a couple of products that I'm using for my particular project that may help you with your lighted projects. Plus also I've been doing a lot of work with the uh, with painting the shuttle bay. Um, I told you on this video I was going to try to address uh, some of the relatively minor problems that people have been encountering with the shuttle bay. I haven't quite got that far yet, but uh, I do have some stuff I do want to talk about in regards to the shuttle bay. So, But, let's get started with the saucer. Okay, uh, looking at where I am with the saucer. Uh, if you notice, I've got pretty much uh, the saucer lights secured in the way I want to, the way I wanted them. The uh, impulse engine lights are uh, secured in the back here. I might make some uh, minor adjustments to their positioning. Uh, the strip LEDs are turning out pretty well. Uh, there was a couple minor issues I encountered when using these, mainly the uh, strip LEDs. If there's a little raised area uh, that they that they can go on, such as on the uh, upper saucer here, I find that the strip LEDs do fit on there rather nicely, mainly because you've got these little connectors that have to slot under them. However, if they're going on a uh, wider flat area, such as, well some of these areas on the outer saucer rim. They don't want to flex and those little adhesive tabs do have an annoying habit of wanting to pop off. Uh, so I came up with a little solution thanks uh, to my local hobby shop which had some RC car supplies. I decided to use a uh, product called Servo Tape. It's a uh, two-sided spongy foam tape, very sticky. And this product is used for RC cars and RC airplanes to uh, tape servo uh, servo harnesses into and servos into uh, into RC cars or RC airplanes to uh, secure them tightly rather than using screws. Um, sticks very very doggone well. Plus, since it's uh, since it's uh, thicker than normal two-sided tape, it gives a little bit of a sponginess. So it gives a little bit of a step and allows these things to stick down really nice. You can also use a drop or two of super glue, but I'm trying to be rather sparing in my application of that, mainly because I don't want to have to, uh, f I don't want to run the risk of damaging these if uh, one gets pulled off. Um, the wiring harnesses themselves even though these uh, connectors do a pretty good job of uh, hooking up the strip lights, I found that it's not a bad idea to secure the wiring harnesses into the uh, into the saucer. Um, I know that HDA, uh, who's one of the other guys who's building a 1 350th Enterprise right now, he's uh, been using a uh, cool temperature hot glue for his. Well, I've come, I decided to use a uh, alternative product called Goo, made by uh, Walters Corporation. Uh, generic term of this stuff is this stuff is known by the generic term of uh, shoe goo. It's a liquid rubber adhesive that you squirt on a couple of parts to smash them together. It's, uh, it's waterproof, it's rather tough, it's flexible. Um, I found that uh, for these wiring harnesses it 
works really well. Just apply a dollop where you need it and you can secure the wiring harnesses. Now this stuff does not uh, set up as fast as uh, the, the cool heat hot glue does, uh, but I find it's a little safer for the plastic and if you use a little bit of tape to secure your wiring harnesses on either side of where you're applying the goo, it uh, can secure the uh, can secure the wiring harnesses really nice until the goo sets up, and then once the goo is fully set up, it uh, the harnesses are in there. They they they're not going to come out. They got a little bit of a flex to them. They're not stuck in there rock hard, so they'll kind of bend a little if they're under stress rather than breaking. But uh, Walters makes goo. Um, shoe goo you can also find at hardware stores. Uh, rail control car shops, same place where I bought the servo tape, also carries it, uh, mainly because it can be used to uh, repair certain elements on RC cars. Well, maybe not actually repair, more like patch. Um, but it's a pretty nice product. Uh, I would say this stuff sets up relatively quick, but to be fully dry, you need probably about 8 to 12 hours, so maybe do this if you're at the end of a building session rather than right at the beginning, otherwise you're going to be waiting a long time for this stuff to set up. Whereas if you do it the last thing before you go to bed for the night, uh, wake up the next morning and everything should be in there nice and secure. They do say be careful using this on painted surfaces, but with the uh, Tamiya Silver Lacquer that I used, doesn't seem to be causing a problem. Uh, it secured in really nice. Uh, yeah, this stuff does have acetone as an active ingredient, uh, but this plastic is so thick, I don't. It didn't really cause any problems. Maybe it might cause problems in uh, some smaller stuff, but in, in stuff with thinner plastic, such as vacuform models. But I don't know. I don't think it does. I think if you use it sparingly enough, it should work okay and allow this stuff a good chance to air dry so the solvent evaporates and you should be ready to go. Uh, one other thing which I will point out with the saucer is I've also got the uh, circuit board screwed down. Now those of you that do have the lighting kit will notice that okay this is where the pylon goes. The instructions basically ha uh, tell you to secure this board going to the rear starboard quarter of the saucer. However, I noticed there was an error with that because there are some little pinpoint light sources back on that side of the saucer and if you screw the board down in that area you're going to cover up those pinpoint light sources. Uh, however, it looks like uh, round two polar lights figured out that there was going to be a problem so they this is where the original screw hole was. They, they tapped another screw hole right in the center right here. And I found by rotating the board just a little bit, uh, going towards the, the aft port side, that I could expose those pinpoint light sources so they'll get light from the, uh, from the upper saucer LEDs. And the, the rear port side does not have any of those little port holes. So this board's in a dead spot where it's not going to cover over any light sources. Um, the servo tape, I stacked a bunch of servo tape on this end of the board to act as a little bit of a cushion. Don't know how well you can see that. Uh, because I didn't like how this board was sitting and playing around with these plugs and stuff, I was kind of worried that I'd end up cracking out this little pedestal. Uh, they use a very small Phillips head screw to secure that, and I don't even think I've got it fully seated, um, but the uh, little platform of built-up servo tape right here acts as, acts as a nice little bit of stability to keep this board from moving, so it's where I want it. But um, not too much longer and I should be ready to uh, seal up this saucer. I'm still doing some white leak uh, pluggings on the on the bridge and some touch-up paints. I've just about got it to where I want it, so I will be sealing up everything very soon, and then I can get on to the real fun stuff, which is what every modeler has to learn how to do, which is gluing the model together properly, filling the seams, and sanding. 
Let's talk a little bit about photo etch. Uh, for this particular model, for those of you who are new to my series of videos, I'm using two sets of photo etch on it. Um, the first one is the Round 2 Polar Lights Factory Photo Etch set, uh, which contains the engine grills, the uh, vents on the uh, on the warp pylons plus also the impulse deck if you notice there's a hole I've used one set of the uh, of the impulse uh, engine exhausts they give you two options one that has kind of like a little bit wider spaced opening in the center of the impulse engines and then one that's just a straight grill um, and then behind it I've got the uh, Paragraphic set, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff missing because I've been using bits for the shuttle bay and I also use some of the panels on the bridge. Anyway, um, for those of you that might be new to Photo Etch, it, it's not really hard to use the stuff, but you do have to use some precautions. Um, I use basically an X-Acto to uh, pop my photo etch out of the frets and then a file to file it. Uh, HDA's video is videos on his 1350th Enterprise are really good showing the precautions he takes working with photo etch. Now, when it comes to attaching the photo etch to plastic parts, there are two products that I like to use. Um, a lot of photo etch instructions say use super glue. Well, yes, that can work. However, super glue is pretty permanent stuff. Um, you apply it, and it's not exactly right. It can be really hard to get that part off again. Um, the product, this little black label bottle that you see here, is just a cheap generic bottle of clear nail polish, which I picked up at a uh, at a Walgreens, I believe it was. Costed under two dollars, I believe. <clears throat> you don't need to get fancy with it. And the product next to it is a product called Micro Crystal Clear, made by Microscale Industries. Micro Crystal Clear is essentially a uh, white glue product, and essentially what you do with it is you uh, you apply a little with your brush and put your part on there. You can even use it to uh, temporarily tack together plastic parts and. When it dries, it dries a lot like white glue. The reason why they call it Micro Crystal Clear is you can also use this to uh, gap over small gaps to uh, represent windows if you might be missing a clear piece. But uh, I predominantly like using clear nail polish to apply my uh, photo etch, uh, mainly because the clear nail polish, it's, it's a little more durable uh, water will not soften it once it's dry, yet the bond is temporary enough that I can pop the part off if I need to. Uh, plus, also on perfectly flat parts, if you brush a little of this over the top, it can put a little um, bead over the top and pr produce a little bit of a rounded edge. Uh, however, the drawback of using clear nail polish is that Clear nail polish can soften some paints, so you want to be very careful if you're applying it to a painted surface. Micro Crystal Clear will not do that. Um, in fact, for uh, the Enterprise model that I'm working on, I found that if I use this to maybe tack down the part first, especially over a painted surface, such as in the uh, shuttle bay area, it works really well, and then I can use the uh, then I can go over the top with the clear nail polish to give it a little bit stronger bond. Because I know I'm even if the even if the surface is painted, because all I have to do is just brush a little over the surface. It's there. It's painted. the The paint will dry back to the shade it was, and provided I don't brush really hard, it shouldn't do anything there. But uh, Reason why I bring this up is the uh, shuttle bay utilizes a lot of light blockers on the on the paragraphic set, and I want to show you how well those work. Alrighty, in front of you you see the uh, shuttle bay all painted up and stuff, um, and don't have much work left before I 
close everything up and seal it up. Um, the unique thing about the Whitehead kit that uh, Round 2 sells is it includes clear parts for the shuttle bay sidewalls, the back wall, and the ceiling. The You use the original kit's uh, gray shuttle bay floor and the shuttle itself, of course. I'm decorating mine up as the uh, Columbus rather than the Galileo because Galileo was like the uh, the red shirt of shuttlecraft. Every time somebody stole it, they ended up destroying it. Columbus, I don't think, uh, Columbus usually came back with no problems. But anyway, uh, I wanted to take this time to talk a little bit more about uh, my light blocking technique. Now, if I flip these parts over, you'll notice that I have spray painted them in silver, but in the case of the uh, shuttle bay parts, rather than spraying them in silver on the back side, uh, since you've got these louvers that are designed to transmit light uh, to the side windows on the rear part of the secondary hull, I've had to light block them on the inside. So what I did was, uh, such as in the case of the sidewalls here, I masked over the areas that were to remain clear, which were the uh, the two little observation decks and all that, and used uh, Tamiya silver leaf to uh, spray them. And then once that was firmly dry, I just masked off and painted on my normal uh, my normal colors, the the ones that they call for in the instructions, specifically sand and then a mixture of uh, neutral gray and uh, dark ghost gray. I don't know why they did that. I think I think if I just used one of the two gray shades, it would have worked okay rather than having to mix. But well, it's accurate. You might see a couple of little silver blobs on there because I'm using uh, silver brush brush paint to uh, plug plug a couple of the light leaks I encountered after after the paintwork was done. But uh, one thing I have noticed is if you do paint uh, Tamiya Silver on the inside, um, some paints may not want to bond with the uh, with, with uh, Silver Metallic quite as well. So if you got a mask over to uh, paint the accent color, such as the gray in my case, it's not a bad idea to uh, uh, Maybe take it somewhere and uh, spray it with uh, with some gloss coat or some dull coat lacquer to seal your first layer of paint in there. Uh, in the case of the acrylic, I, in the case of the uh, sand color I used, I didn't use the uh, Tester's Model Master color because I had a b bottle of uh, old poly S paint in exactly the same shade that I wanted to use. And that paint was a little fragile due to its age, so it was prone to scratching off. So after I made a couple of touch-ups, I just took it in the garage and just shot it with a couple of coats of lacquer to seal it in there and it's bonded with that silver really well. Uh, if you notice I also used uh, silver on the bottom deck even though this is molded in gray. Reason being is even though it's opaque, light's still going to go through it if you're not careful. Um, I gotta give a shout out to Paragraphics, they're, uh, although I encountered a couple of minor fit problems on the bridge, the, uh, the shuttle bay photo etch is fitting like a glove perfectly, especially in the case of the, uh, of the uh, overhead skylight frames. I mean, I, I just bent those as needed and it just popped right in. The, uh, the uh, grilled areas on either side of that Skylight also fit in really well. Um, also got a little uh, clear green on these little tiny round portholes that sit just below the uh, the rectangular ports and under lighting things look really really good. Um, did encounter one minor light leak after I applied the uh, the photo etched uh, uh, segmented cargo door but uh, it's it seems to be working so not too much work left that little shuttlecraft is tiny but 
it'll, I mean, once everything is done and in there with all the lights, it'll probably look like the inside of a Fabergé egg when I'm done. And, oh, decals on the doors, those look really sharp. Uh, round 2 did a really good job designing these decals. And they all worked with uh, Microcell and Microset just nice. So, I'll be happy to see the shuttle bay done and installed. And first time I light it, it's going to look really, really good, I think. Well, got the uh, secondary hull set up here for a, uh, for a test fit. Um, before I uh, started work on the clear parts, I actually did assemble the, uh, the gray shuttle bay and used it for some test fitting and everything seems to slot in really nice uh, with with my temporary tape job uh, with the with the clear parts onto the uh, onto the secondary hole in the shuttle bay everything else seems to fit as well so uh, next video I should be further along with the uh, secondary hole lighting to determine if there are any uh, if there is anything obvious that might be causing some of the fit problems that uh, some of the other modelers have been encountering. I do admit the uh, the top seam on the secondary hull might be prone to a little bit of a gapping even even if everything is installed properly but I'm pretty sure I can get this thing to fit. Uh, it just takes a little bit of figuring with the LEDs and doing repeated test fittings to make sure that there's no problems. So next time you hear from me I should have this all together and if I did unco uncover anything obvious I will let you guys know but otherwise things are going well I've got the windows glued into the uh, secondary hull I've also got the neck pylon finished for the most part and well, add the engines on top of that and the warp pylons and then the lighting phase can conclude and then the heavy duty filling and sanding can begin so until my next video happy modeling and thank you for watching